What is up you guys? So in this one we're going to talk about the so-called Newton's method. We're going to attempt a very intuitive explanation on why Newton's method works, why it's done that way, why is it gradient based, and by the end of the lecture we're going to, as we did with the bisection method, we're going to give a MATLAB implementation of the Newton's method and test it on different functions. So without further ado, let's get started. Right, so let's say, so the goal here as always is to find the root of a given function f of x equal to zero where the root is denoted by x star. Um, so like the bisection method and the, and the fixed point method, Newton's method is also iterative in nature. And Newton is quite different than fixed point and then bisection in a sense that it works on the gradient of the function. And it makes sense because Newton does a very smart trick on the functions we're trying to find the roots of. So say I've got the following function, right? So this is my x and this is my f of x. Let me zoom in. Um, I think this is good, right? Yep. And right here is my x star. Okay. Well, what does uh, Newton say over here? So he says that pick an initial x star. Let's say this x star over here for no reason, just an initial random guess. And Newton tells us that, well, okay, your x star over here could be in its local regime right here in its local neighborhood. So let's say over here or instead of drawing this, if I zoom in a lot, this guy actually looks like a straight line, right? If I zoom in a lot, it looks like a straight line. So in other words, Newton does a local approximation to F on the point we are at X zero. In other words, at any given iteration, let's say F of X N, Newton actually tends to find a step Delta N that sets this guy to zero and he doesn't do it directly on f no as we said there's a local approximation to f in other words f x n plus delta n is approximated by its taylor series so f x n plus delta n if we apply a taylor series around x n right what we have is the following so we get first of all f x n plus delta n f prime of x n, right? Plus big O delta n square. But we really don't care about this term, so we're going to set it to zero since we're applying a quadratic approximation on f. Indeed, if you go up, you can have a better approximation, but you won't have a nice looking expression of your iterative function. Why am I saying that? It's because what we care about here is to get an expression of delta n because it's thanks to delta n that we're going to update our next point xn plus 1. So my xn plus 1, so my next point is going to be the current point plus the step that we just obtained thanks to this approximation. Indeed other methods exist but Newton is one of the first methods that states the simple approximation on f to obtain a closed form solution of delta. Now, if we take this expression, right, this expression over here is what we need to derive our delta n. Why? Well, since this guy is zero, why does it work? Because since this guy is zero, we can insert the zero over here, okay? We get that zero now is approximately equal to fxn plus delta n f prime of xn. Well now delta n would be minus f of xn over f prime of xn. Okay, so now plugging this guy back here, we get Newton's method. That is each point is updated as the current point plus delta n, which is minus f xn over f prime of xn. So this guy is what is known today as Newton's method. 
So the thing to take off here is that Newton's method really does the assumption that, you know, at the current point we are at, we say that our, we don't admit that our function is f as is. No, we say it's a linear approximation using Taylor's series. So Taylor's assumptions should apply on this point. That is, our derivative right here shouldn't be zero. Otherwise, this guy will blow to infinity. And so we cannot track the solution. OK, so this is one assumption. Another one is that you get stuck in a cycle. That is, xn plus 1 gives you um, something different than xn. But then xn plus 2 gives you xn. <laughs> so then, so xn gives you xn plus 1 gives you xn plus 2, which then gives you xn. This happens in Newton's. So your derivative at each and every point um, where Newton is going to be computed should exist and should not be zero. And you should pay attention to, to cycles. OK, so this is really how Newton's method is derived. Intuitively, it's all based off a step that imposes a local approximation on F so that we can derive a closed form equation for delta n. So now let's go to MATLAB. And right here, I still have the running example of the previous lecture um, that where we implemented the bisection method. So over here, what I'm going to do is simply create a function called Newton. OK, so function Newton. And I'm going to save it. So that it is visible here on the current folder, right? And so what is Newton going to accept? Of course, it's going to accept f, since we need f of x in, the, in its equation. We need df, which is f prime of x. So we need both expressions, f of x and f prime of x. Keep that in mind for the next lecture. Why am I saying this? Because, you know, in some applications, you do not have direct access to or, you know, it doesn't seem um, logical. So for, for each function, I want to find the roots of that I need to compute a closed form solution for its derivative. That's the, you know, the, I would say the disadvantage of Newton's method. You need a closed form expression of f prime of x. Okay, so we need f of x, f prime of x, a starting point and let's say the number of iterations that we're going to run on Newton's method. Again, like in the bisection method, we could input instead of the number of iterations an accepted tolerance epsilon so that when xn plus one and xn differ in absolute value, uh, their difference in absolute value is less than this epsilon, we quit. We say, that's it. Newton's method is terminated. We're happy with xn plus one. Okay. But we're not going to do that. We're going to run it an iteration number of times, right? The output is going to be x and its error function. So as we did previously, we're going to give a small description so that when we come back to it, as in the bisection method, we have a description right here. So I'm going to copy paste it here and I'm just going to change some stuff. So f remains the same. A, b do not exist over here. So I'm going to erase them and I'm going to say df. And what is df? df is just short for f prime of x, which is the derivative of f of x. Also, um, x0 is an initial guess, right? And the outputs remain the same. OK, so now um, what are we going to do right now? Uh, well, let's do the first. Um, iteration manually as such. So x1 is x0 minus f of x0 over f prime of x0. Okay, good. This is the first iteration and let's compute its error um, function. Let's say it's absolute value of x1, even though we're not utilizing it directly in the in the main function, it's good to keep it aside to see how the error function behaves. OK, and now let's say we are at the second iteration and run a while loop on K less than or equal to n number of iterations. And for each iteration, I'm going to increment K by one. OK, 
Now, I'm going to copy paste this right here because it's really the same expression, but this time for k, taking k minus one, right? Over here, it's k minus one from the previous iteration and as well over here. Okay, likewise, the error function is really the exact same thing right here, except that this time it's at k, evaluated at k. And that's it. This is how Newton's function is implemented on MATLAB, as easy and as simple as you see in front of you. Okay, now back to the main function where we have our, we have our functions. We have bisection already running, so I'm going to run this. This is what we had from the previous lecture. What I'm going to do is, on top of those figures, I'm going to add how Newton's method is going to behave, okay? So I would expect um, the same exact thing over here, but for Newton. How are we going to do this? First thing, I'm going to copy paste the description right here, and let's see. Hmm. Okay. Um, f1, right? And we need df1, which we don't have over here. Okay, we need an x0 as well. Um, so let's start an initial guess of 1 for all functions. Okay, 1. And number of iterations we have. So now what I need to do is compute the, de uh, the derivative. I'm going to do this manually. So right here, derivative of the given functions. So let's see, df1 is the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, and the derivative of 2x is 2, and the derivative of 5 is 0. df2 as well, uh, it's minus exponential of minus x is minus e minus x, and x is 1, the derivative of x is 1. Now df3, we have sine x, plus, so this is uh, fx gx, so f prime g plus f g prime, so plus x cosine x, okay? And the f4 is, this is not a calculus lesson, so I assume you're familiar at least with derivatives, okay? Plus 3. Okay, so those are our derivatives, right? Good. So right now over here, I have everything I need. So let me give a proper description of the inputs over here. So instead of bisection, I'll call it Newton. Okay, Newton, right? And now I have the proper description. I'm going to copy it three more times for F2, F3, F4, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, and 2, 3, and 4, right here. I'm going to plot on top of what I had, okay, in magenta, I'm going to plot x1 newton. And I'm going to update the legend saying that this guy is obtained by newton. I'm going to run this, and this is only going to apply for the first subplot, just to check if everything is running correctly. And there you go. So we see that um, we are converging, right? But hold on, where is the bisection? Oh, okay. This should be below the hold on so that you don't lose the plot. And there you go. We have the bisection and the Newton. Bisection and bisection and Newton. Okay? Both converging. Good. I'm going to do the same thing for the other subplots. So over here, x2, and update the legend um, over here x3 and I'm going to copy paste the legend right here and over here x4 and update the legend and this should get the job done okay we kind of see Newton over here but it is not visible to me over here over here and over here what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add more description on the plot I need it with dots, with O's, um, right. So as you can see right here, right here, and right here, they're visible. You can see convergence is super fast. Actually, it's because we started really close to the solution um, at one. Correct solution is 1.4. That's the reason why. And over here, let's try to change the initial gas to two, to zero, 
and you can see over here what happens. This guy starts crazy and then converges right over here, converges really quick. Over here, we don't see anything. And the reason is because if you run and start a breakpoint, you hover over here, you see not a number, N-A-N. And that's because of the conditions I just mentioned earlier. You need to make sure that your initial point doesn't null out the derivative okay that's very important um, as you can see the first value is infinity which means that your denominator was zero so infinity and then this infinity is computed over and over again and yields a not a number so let's change that back to one over here because that would be an initial good guess and run again and there you go well if you want to tweak around let's say i don't know 10 instead of one um, so let's test with negative values let's say minus five there you go um, it actually converges right it converges well is that a root what if this function has multiple roots right what if it has multiple roots is this a root of the function minus 21.95 is it a root let's check let's get f3 and check f3 f3 of 21.95 Yes, it is. Uh, was it 21.95? Let's check again. Yes, minus 21.95. Uh, what would be interesting here is to plot the error function of this particular function. Um, that is um, error 3 Newton. So I'm going to run this, check the error function. It goes to zero. Um, so if I open a figure and I plot this error function, it is going to zero, look. Which means that this particular function that we're working with um, has multiple roots and we're converging to one of them, okay? It doesn't mean that you didn't do your conversions properly. No, your initial point was closer to one root than another, um, if that makes sense. So you also should ask yourself the question, um, is the root that I'm focusing on, is it the only root? If yes, okay, it should converge to it. If not, if it's converging to something else, is that something else another root? If so, then there you go. It's not that the method was doing something wrong, okay? Okay, so that's it for this lecture. Um, in this one, we talked about uh, Newton's method, right? We derived it through intuition rather than attempting a rigorous mathematical proof. We give an intuitive example on how it's derived. In other words, we considered a local approximation of the function at each point we are in at Newton's iteration. Okay, That allows us to estimate the or to get a closed form expression of the step at each iteration, delta n, which is expressed as the negative of f of xn over f prime of xn. The disadvantages of this method is that um, it depends on the gradient of the function. That is, your gradient should be ensured that it exists, first of all, and that it is non-zero at each of the iteration points, and that you don't get locked in a cycle of the Newton's method. In the next lecture, Seekins method, we're going to see that we don't need knowledge of the gradient. We're going to approximate the derivative using xn and xn plus 1. By the end of the lecture, we saw how Newton's method is implemented on MATLAB and tested on different functions. So thanks for watching. If you found this lecture beneficial, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions whatsoever, kindly leave a comment down in the comment section below. I'll make sure I'll get to it as soon as possible. Also consider becoming a member of this channel um, by clicking on the join button down next to the subscribe button to support the channel and to have access to special perks on this channel, such as acquiring the codes you see in front of you, lecture notes um, written in LaTeX and uh, in PDF. So you have PDF and LaTeX, let me show you. So you will have access to lecture notes as such written by myself, okay? Um, with all examples, all the code, and so on. Okay, right. And if you cannot support the channel, I understand. It's okay. I will always provide lectures on this channel for volunteering purposes. So I'll see you in the next one.